reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2 verse 10 to 12. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and more. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We finished the Advent Bible study last Wednesday. I had been studying and meditating on the Incarnation of Christ since November. I really, really enjoyed this study. It enriched my soul and my mind. I remember one story that Adam Hamilton shared. He told about a time when his car ran out of gas during the Christmas season. Hamilton had visited a parishioner who was dying. It was a really good visit for the family, despite the fact that this church member was dying. Hamilton shared the message of Christmas, and they sang carols together and prayed together. After the visit, he was supposed to meet his wife, and he was on his way when he felt the gas pedal go soft. He had forgotten to fill the gas tank. He pulled off to the side of the road, and he decided to walk in the neighborhood and knock on doors to ask for a can of gas. 
There was a house that had a light on out in the front. He knocked on that door, but he was worried about being scary, so he introduced, he introduced himself as a pastor and he asked, I am so sorry, I ran out of gas, I'm such an idiot, is there any way you have any gas? Thankfully, they had some, and they let him use it. Hamilton thanked them and wanted to give them money for the gas. He handed them a $20 bill, but they said, there is no way that I'm taking your money. We leave the front light on for people whose cars break down so that they can find their way to us and we can help them. Of course, Hamilton was amazed by the hospitality of the generous couple. And I was amazed by their hospitality too. What a great story to tell at Christmas. He followed the light and the light led him to find favor. He found grace. It reminds us that Christmas, I mean, the Christ shined his light to people when he ministered to them. He healed the sick, became friends with the sinners, and ate with them. His light was shown when he shared his love with others. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I love reading this verse, especially during Christmas. Jesus entered this world as a light. And Christmas is about the celebration of light piercing our darkness. God's light coming to us to enlighten our lives. We do not need to fear even in difficult circumstances, because we have the light of Christ guiding us and leading us. We can make a decision to follow this light, trusting that this light will lead us to God's favor. When Jesus was born, there was also a bright light, a shining star which drew the attention of Magi. Now, we don't know much about the Magi. Some scholars suggest that Magi were Jewish sages living in Persia as part of the diaspora. These scholars of the Torah would have been familiar with the scripture and the prophesied about the star and scepter coming out of Israel. The point is, they decided to follow the light because they wanted to find the Messiah and worship the Messiah. They came to worship. They came to discover this newborn king. They offered valuable gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But in return, they received amazing grace from God. Here's the surprising part. Jesus offers something that they could not even comprehend. He offers everlasting life. We just cannot calculate the gifts that Jesus offers to us. Jesus is the King who gives us life. Jesus is the everlasting light sent from God to save us from the darkness of sin. It's interesting to note that light is a universal symbol of hospitality. It's a way of saying that you are welcome here. When Adam Hamilton needed a can of gas to start his car, he found the light. The light led him to a generous couple who would share a can of gas. He found favor. One scholar puts it this way, the very night Jesus was born, a bright star in the heavens announced that the kingdom of God is making room for every man, woman, and child upon the earth. That's right. The heavens announced that the kingdom of God is making room for everyone. Jesus entered this world as a light so that people may find a way to the truth, a way to grace. Through him, we find God's generous heart, his everlasting love, and his hospitality. 
God welcomes us. God makes room for us, no matter how sinful we are and how unjust we are. We are welcomed in God's kingdom. Helen Keller, who was blind and deaf, after an illness, when she was a toddler, lived in complete darkness until a light came to her life. Her teacher, Anne Sullivan, was a miracle worker to Helen. Anne became the source of joy for Helen. Helen once said this about Anne. She said, Gradually, I got used to the silence and darkness that surrounded me and forgot that you had ever been different until she came, my teacher, who was set to my spirit free. It is amazing to know that one human being can bring such a difference to another human being, almost like a light to the darkness. Here's one thing we need to remember about the light of Christ. As Jesus shined his light into darkness of our world, the truth of our human condition was revealed. Even our dark side was revealed. Our ego, pride, greed, and violence. As the scripture says, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. All of us have fallen from grace. That's what the light of Christ does. It reveals our dark side. But the good news is that Jesus is a light that saves us. He's our Savior. He will set our spirit free. So let's remember this. God sent His only Son on the first Christmas to bring the sinners back home. God sent His Son to use as a light so that we can follow this light and find God's favor, His forgiving grace. The Christmas Eve service is so meaningful to many of us. I experienced this amazing service last year at Mount Vernon. When we see the light of the Christ candle, we are reminded that Jesus drove out the darkness. Light triumphed over darkness. As we pass a light to the next person, God reminds us that we have a mission to do. We need to pass the light of Christ to the world so that the darkness of the world will be driven out. I believe that our society needs a light of hospitality. God made room for us in His kingdom, and we need to make room for others, inviting others to God's kingdom. When Jesus was born, the Holy Family received unexpected visits. First, there were the smelly shepherds. These shepherds, they were the low-class people at the time. They weren't welcome everywhere. But Joseph and Mary made room for these guests. Later, more strangers came to visit the Holy Family. The Magi were wearing strange clothes. They were different people. Maybe Mary wanted some rest or quiet time. But again, they welcomed these unexpected guests. The Magi brought gifts to them, and they brought love and encouragement, and they told the Holy Family that Jesus was a special child. He was worthy to be worshipped. These guests, shepherds and wise men, celebrated and worshipped the newborn king. Well, unlike these guests who worshipped Jesus, the religious leaders and the Pharisees, they didn't worship the Lord when they encountered Jesus. Some of the leaders despised Jesus, and they even attacked him. Interestingly, the word Pharisee means the separated ones. They separated themselves from anything unclean and impure 